Hey everyone, welcome to Build Series. I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. Today I'm sitting down with Chloe Levine, who plays Angie in the OA Part 2, which was just released on Netflix. The second season follows OA, the original Angel, as she navigates a new dimension. Meanwhile, back in the first dimension, Angie and the boys find themselves on a journey to understand the truth behind OA's story and the incredible realities she described. Take a look. Hey! Yo! Stop! You guys need a ride? Yes, please. Oh, guys, come on. Get your stuff. Oh, get in. Oh, thank you so guys, much. Guys, my pleasure. Come on. You're a lifesaver. Give it up for Chloe Levine. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Good. How about you? I'm good. And thank you for joining us because I've got a lot of questions about this show. <laughs> and I think a lot of people do, which is why it's so fun to watch, is that it is such a kind of mind-bending ride. I want to start off with the basics, though. For those who haven't seen the OA first season or part two, can you sort of describe in general what the show is about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's about a young woman who she disappears when she's a teenager and she's blind. And then seven years later, she reappears in her hometown. And uh, it's about where she went. <laughs> and she, she has her vision back when she reappears. So and how that happens. I'm happy you described it because I'm like, that's what I would say. But then as you watch the show, there's so... I mean, it's hard to describe yeah. it without giving so much away and you know, going into crazy detail and stories yeah absolutely but how does it feel to have part two out and for the show to have been you know not only like back for a second season but so anticipated because right. people had to wait for it yeah yeah I mean it's it's really incredible um I think that you know they took their time with it which is and it's exciting that you know people didn't forget about it mm -hmm. they're very excited to see the second part yeah. It's hard to forget about it because of how first season ended uh, with like basically a choreography that thwarted a school shooting is maybe the best way to describe yeah. <laughs> uh, that finale. So where do we pick up now in, in season two or part two? Well, we pick up a few days after the end of season two. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much I want to say about yeah. it because it's such, you know, it's really something to just watch it and experience it on your own. Yeah. Um, but that technically a few days after, you know, the end of part one. Right. Yeah. And uh, I guess what we can say is that there is a new dimension. And so mm -hmm. uh, the OA is in this new dimension. Your character and the boys are still in the previous one. Right. Um, do we see overlap eventually or is there? Uh, <laughs> I can't. This is can such a hard show to talk know, about yeah. and not spoil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, you know, that's not even a question for me. That's a question for Britain's all, actually. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Let's <laughs> talk about Britain's all because um, they just had an article out and their minds seem like really amazing places. Um, and <laughs> really, I mean, how you, they can create this and the visuals. And I know they took their time, but that was obviously with intention. Mm -hmm. So what has it been like working with them and what have you maybe learned? Because um, I know you, you are a filmmaker as well. So like, what mm -hmm. have you maybe learned just about the process of creating something like this? I mean, well, it's just, it's really incredible to watch both of them work. And uh, I've been a fan of theirs for a really long time, especially Brit. I I remember I was in high school and I watched Another Earth at the Sunshine, which is no longer RIP. But, uh, and I was just like, who is this person? I was like, who is she? And I, uh, I went home and I looked her up and I read an, an interview that she did and she said something like, 
yeah, I wasn't, I was trying to be an actress and I wasn't seeing the roles that I wanted that were interesting to me. So I just like made my own and that just blew my mind, right? And uh, definitely a large part of why I started to make my own stuff. So it's been really just insane to now a few years later work on her show. It's just like really surreal. That's phenomenal. Have you told her that? Like, yeah, hey, I have. You've inspired I, have. Me. <laughs> I did. My my first the first day that I saw her on set, I fangirled a little bit. I was like, oh my god! And she was so sweet about it. Um, she's just such also just such a lovely person. They both are. Yeah. Absolutely. And so your character Angie, um, what can you tell us about her moving forward, or what was the most fun to sort of dig into or play about her in the part two? Um, I think one of the things that really stands out is, and this isn't a spoiler, is uh, that I had to learn the movements. In the story, Steve teaches Angie the movements, and that was pretty wild, especially because I'm not a dancer. I'm not coordinated at all, and uh, it's a lot, and it's very intricate, but it's so... It's, a, it's just a lot, learning them, yeah. Did you guys have kind of extensive rehearsals? What was that behind the scenes process like? Yeah, we rehearsed for a long time, uh, months. I learned it months in advance, um, and I practiced constantly. My family can attest to that. <laughs> and then on set, every once in a while, we would just sort of run it yeah. whenever we could as a group, yeah. I mean, now you have some new moves to pull out yes. on a wedding, I guess. <laughs> really <laughs> kind of interpretive and different, but hey, moves are moves. Yeah, for um, sure. I also read that you prepare for a character by listening to music that they listen to. Yeah. So what kind of music does Angie listen to? So I decided that Angie is a riot girl. Mm -hmm. So a lot of riot girl stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. In, in any way, is that like you, or is that similar to music you would listen to? Yeah, I love I love uh, riot girl music yeah. for sure. Uh, so that was really fun to sort of make her playlist and uh, a lot of things overlapped with my own. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> uh, what else do you do to prep or get into character? Especially, I mean, this role, and we'll talk about the, the film that you're in, there's sort of intense subject matter and intense yeah. roles. Yeah. Um, well, I read the script as, as many times that I can, as I can. I'm pretty obsessive about that. And then um, the way that I studied acting is just sort of, it's, uh, it's you come from yourself and then you just put yourself into these really, whatever the circumstances are. And the best way to do that is to just get really specific about things and sort of imagine, I don't know, thing, like, like things like textures and colors and sounds, especially there are moments where I think the entire group in season uh, two has PTSD from the shooting. So to dive into exactly what that would have been like and the sounds that might have happened, to just think about the specifics, yeah, you know. Well, really micro, just like the real yeah, details. Yeah, exactly, the details. That's really interesting. Does that ever get hard or? Yeah, yeah, yeah especially with something, something like in the OA, um, it is really hard. You kind of subject yourself to these imaginary circumstances that are like scary. <laughs> but that, for me, I mean, that's part of the fun of, of acting is, you know, exploring things I maybe normally wouldn't have, yeah. yeah. What is it like to be a part of the show of a show like the OA? Because when you go online, people have theories. Yeah. <laughs> you go you can go deep in a like a Reddit rabbit hole about this show, which mm -hmm. again, that's kind of rare, like for people to have all these theories. I read one, which you, I don't expect you to answer. Okay. Um, that, you know, it could be tied to other Netflix shows. So in Stranger oh, Things, man. there's another dimension and people are like, oh, these are all part of the same, like Netflix is going to surprise us one day with like all these shows being connected. That's a good one. Started around this yeah. time. Yeah. So how cool is it for you to be a part of a show that has that much kind of influence and have fans, like, do they reach out to you and ask you and kind of try to engage about those things? Yeah. Like sometimes I open my I, uh, you know how Instagram like filters yeah. messages. Sometimes I open that and like look through it and there's like a lot of interesting stuff in there. People have really interesting theories. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, Netflix is just like, surprise. Right. No, but um, it's really special. It's, it's really sort of incredible to be a part of something that has really touched a lot of people and sort of inspired these other ideas in it, you know? How much do you know <laughs> nothing. Right. I know like, nothing. <laughs> do you know what would be in season three or have they talked to you about yeah. the kind of arc of the OA? No, on, honestly, the only thing that I know is that brands all have um, have five parts mm -hmm. laid out. So. 
that's it. That's all I know. <laughs> cool. That was yeah. super vague. I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, let's move on to this film that you're in called Savage Youth. Um, I got to watch the trailer today and it is a beautiful film and kind of tackles these really heavy subject matters and it seems like kind of deep and dark. And so talk to me about this role and why it was something that you wanted to be a part of. Yeah, so Savage Youth, is it's about, uh, it's a true crime story about these murders that happened in 2013. These four teenagers killed these other two teenagers in this small town in Illinois. And uh, it's interesting because the movie isn't really about the murders. Um, it's not a glorification of this thing that happened, but more of like a character study about how these young people, when they got together, sort of like ignited this thing within each other to to make them capable of, um, of doing this horrific thing. Yeah. So for me, that was a, just that idea is, is really interesting to me and um, was something that I, I wanted to be a part of, which now it sounds really perverse, but uh, yeah. But that must be fun because the four of you really had to kind of work together and figure out those dynamics, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. how'd you work on that chemistry? Yeah, I think we were all really lucky to just... Uh, get along really well and um we all were sort of game for for what we were going to do like our, our director mike he uh he's really into improv mm. and we all sort of were ready for that uh, and ready to sort of dive into these personalities and and play with each other in this way so um so it was really intense but you can't help getting close to people that way and and we're still pretty close yeah yeah how different was it for you to do those improv scenes? I would imagine, especially since it's sort of like a darker film, mm -hmm. it's not like comedic improv. Right. Right. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because you, you have to like allow yourself to live in this scary space where, um, especially when it's based off someone who, who is real. Um, so it was definitely difficult. It was definitely something that I was scared of at first, but you kind of have to trust that, you know, it's still play. Yeah. You're still just playing around, um, but definitely something really challenging and just interesting to dive into, yeah. What do you hope the takeaway is for people who want to see this film, which will be available on April 9th. Uh, you just have to Google it, streaming services everywhere. Um, but what do you hope people uh, to kind of take away from it or think about after? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, I think that, I don't know, just how dangerous uh, how dangerous it can be to, hmm, yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. In reading it, it seems like the two boys have these uh, dangerous personalities. Yeah. And I think for me, it's just like this cautionary tale of when, Definitely. you know, you kind of feed into those people or enable them too much and, yes. you know, yeah. bad things can happen. Yeah. Who knows? No, that's <laughs> perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know our audience has a couple of questions. So uh, who do we have first? Hi, uh, I was just curious how uh, you got into acting and if you remember how you went about preparing for the initial audition for the OA. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, so I'm the youngest. If, uh, I have two older sisters and my oldest sister was an actress. Uh, she's eight years older than me. So when I was a kid, very little, I was always in our manager's office. It was just her manager then. Um, and then when I was about five... I was like, yo, Carolyn, who's my manager, I was like, uh, when can I audition or something? And uh, that's, that was the first time that I sort of decided that I wanted to do it. I quit a couple times since then, you know, for things like softball, you know, I was a kid. Uh, and as far as the OA audition, um, I remember getting these like really cryptic sides and I was like, the OA, what? Um, and then, just I just ran lines with my mom a lot <laughs> and uh, went in and was like, I have no idea what how, what that was about. But then I, <laughs> yeah, that's a very weird cryptic story. But yeah, the whole show is pretty cryptic, though. So yeah. Fine it fits. <laughs> uh, what was your reaction, though, when you got the call that you got the, the I call? was like, I was mind blown because, you know, being such a fan of Brit, I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah. I love that. I always think that's really special when you have the opportunity to work with somebody who you respect. Yeah. Like, 
that is such a cool thing. So I'm happy that happened. <laughs> uh, next question. Hello. Um, so I have an online question, and it's being a filmmaker yourself, do you have any of your own upcoming projects that are in the works that you could share with us? Uh, yeah, so I've been I've been writing this script for a really long time now. Uh, it's in its third or fourth draft, and right now it's it's just a it's just a script. Hopefully, someday very soon, I can tell say that it's uh, in pre production or something. But that's about all I can say right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some you know, great work takes a while. It takes a long time. As we've seen with the OA. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I'm sure it will be worth the wait <laughs> whenever you get it done. Hope so, yeah. Um, so I wanted to mention again, Savage Youth is available on April 9th. But if you guys want to check out season, oh wait, we have a Twitter question. My bad. Um, Hi, Chloe. As an actor, does your emotional process differ based on each role you play? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Every role that I get, it's sort of a, a little bit of a different process because it's, uh, it's a different character. Um, I guess, actually, the emotional process, I still go into the specifics like that we talked about. So it's just about changing the circumstances and changing the the details but I guess more or less it's the same emotional process yeah I guess what was the music then for the character in Savage Youth oh man um Sean what's his name Sean Mendes? no <laughs> like, no 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 is... no Chris Brown oh wow yeah interesting Just, yeah heavy <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, guys, Savage Youth is available on April 9th. And if you want to check out the OA Part 2, it is streaming now on Netflix. Give it up for Chloe Levine. Oh, thanks for having me.